Hello everyone. This is de facto review for this week with me, Jargal Tampadarja. We will talk about two topics. One is about education system is changed in Mongolia. The second is UB traffic challenge. We see again the new traffic in Ulaanbaatar city. First of all about education system. The the basket of new laws of education covering all level of education, including special education, professional education, lifelong education, are, are approved. Now it will be Im implemented from this academic year. And uh, uh, let's talk about first about the primary school, secondary school, I mean. Secondary school, uh, we have still more students coming than who are leaving or graduating. Some 70,000 uh, are new students coming to the schools and only 30,000 are leaving the schools after 12th year of education. So it means we need to gain more and more schools and still there are risk of having some 50 uh, schools having the three shifts. It's very high pressure on the teachers, schools, because it, when the school works in three shifts, they usually start, uh, the smaller ch children go at the end. It's in the evening they go, and it's also another uh, problem, creating another problem. Uh, for professional education system, they have changed the name of professional school, the technical school name into the professional professional education school uh, and um, they have been creating special uh, college at at the six state-owned universities meaning that those students who will uh, study in these schools uh, colleges they will go to universities the related universities and they will study shorter than the ordinary students uh, it is it is done in order to meet more the demand of particular profession on, on the market and to prepare to prepare better qualified professionals now we it, it raises again the issue of quality of our education in particular higher education higher education they they, they have a different uh, state on Institutions, tertiary institutions have three ways of, of financing. One is uh, from the payment. It's majority of the, their income. It's almost 77% in case of Mongolian National University. And the second is uh, uh, from the uh, state budget. The third is from their own operation. This year, for example, you know, Mongolian National University payment tuition fee will be around four and a half million MNT, provided that a student gets 35 credit hour. Then, for example, this another secondary private school, Shin Mongol Haruma Fuji, uh, tuition will be 7.9, almost 8 a million, for your comparison. So, uh, universities need to increase their quality to make a better uh, education system, but the financing is not enough in Mongolia. Uh, so how can we solve the issue? Uh, Mongolia is spending 4.6% of GDP for education. It's a world average. Finland, 5.8%. The highest amount is by Namibia. They spend 9% of GDP for education. But it's a matter of also how big the GDP is. Uh, that's why, what is the percentage in terms of state budget expenditure? Mongolia is spending 19.4% of their budget for education, for example, as of 2021. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, it's on one side how much the country can spend for that, on the other side how much, how effective a country uses that spending. 
for example, schools and kindergartens in Ulaanbaatar city are spending approximately 10% of total budget for electricity, heating, water, sewage, etc. And out of these 10%, 77% are costs for heating. So it means in a cold country like uh, Mongolia, you need to pay more attention on thermal as, as isolation of uh, the school building and to make sure that they are not losing any heat to the cold outside. Uh, that's one of the re reasons why we need to increase the uh, expenditure for education. The other thing, uh, the other thing is uh, it's a quality of uh, institutions of the governance in terms of education. It means ministries, schools, universities, the way how it is organized. Because in the state uh, organizations, ministries, research centers, because the salary is a law, the uh, people turnover is high, and long-term visionary people, capa more capacity, more capable people are uh, reluctant to work for state-owned enterprises, for, for, so for public institutions. That's another issue. The third issue is a, a combination of uh, public and private schools, uh, schools, universities in Mongolia. Mongolian private schools show there are many, Canadian, Australian, British, American, and I'll name it, many, many uh, private institutions, schools are in Mongolia, and they, they, they graduates have a more chance to enter, to have, uh, to, to enter into uh, better universities in the world, which shows that Mongolians can do it. Mongolians can have a, can teach good education and can receive a good education. So based on this example, we need to increase quality of Mongolian public schools where teachers need to be paid more. Uh, the best teachers are usually taken by the private sector. So it's an issue also spending rationally the limited resources of money. Uh, for example, uh, private school students per capita, uh, they receive money per students from the state budget. Yet Mongolian public schools have not enough budget, and that's why they have, for example, three shifts as we have talked. And there are many things they need to spend. That's why initially it is, uh, initially we should stop paying the private schools per cap, per student payment from the budget, as it is paid anyway by their parents who can afford. Uh, instead, those money should go to, uh, for example, to having uh, more schools so that the people don't go in three shifts. So these are three observations I would like to say in connection with new system of education introduced in Mongolia from this year due to the new set of laws on education. Our second topic is Ulaanbaatar traffic challenge. These days we see again more and more cars. We are again in a huge traffic jam. We stay again longer and longer in your car. Why? Because next week we will have a new academic year for all level of education system. And um, Mayor of Ulaanbaatar City, Sumaya Bazar, made a press conference open, called Open Ulaanbaatar which he intends to do uh, uh, permanently, probably weekly, he didn't say that, but uh, weekly. And in this uh, press conference he had introduced about five steps the city will take uh, in addressing the issue of traffic, uh, traffic jam. First, they will uh, renew city urban planning, uh, also car, auto network renewing and they will increase quality and accessibility of the public transport. The fourth is uh, 
regu better regulation and uh, planning engineering, planning engineering of, uh, of traffic. Fifth is a new uh, regulatory steps. So these are five things he will uh, take, take, but it, the, those are not a new one. Uh, but however, he means that they will approach differently now. For example, they will change the standards for constructions, buildings, structures, and outdoor roads. They will now also increase the park of public bus parking. Uh, for example, they will have 500 new buses uh, this year, and they also Ulaanbaatar the city will increase. They say that we will have a new standard for taxi services, which I find very difficult uh, because now almost every second car can stop as soon as you vote for the on the street. And uh, thanks to that, by the way, Ulaanbaatar taxi prices charges are not increasing. Uh, with the speed of inflation or with the speed of uh, uh, the exchange rate. So that's what the Ulaanbaatar city is planning. Of course, it's also a financing issue. And the Ulaanbaatar city financing is uh, consisting of 66% uh, uh, from the taxes from the citizens. And out of that, a half is consisting of uh, different kind of income tax. Another half is, has to do with the rest of the taxes, including the real estate taxes. And the real estate taxes are something that is uh, not everybody is following because they uh, introduce the market, not market value, but the somehow all balance value or something, not real uh, value of the buildings. And they pay, some of them pay only up to 1% of the real estate. Um, I was told that the only uh, right payment comes, more truly market value payment is coming from the Shangri-La Hotel, for example. But however, there is a huge issue of, uh, of uh, housing. In Mongolia, the houses are, housing, houses are tax exempt, income tax, uh, real estate tax exempted by law. But uh, however, there is a strange situation because uh, Ulaanbaatar city in the south, Bogd Mount, in each valley, there are very expensive real estates up to 1 million, 2 million US dollar uh, cost, but those are not paying taxes because uh, under this law of housing. However, they, they are existing in the, or made, they are made in uh, naturally protected places where they don't pay any taxes. So probably it's uh, fair to introduce new taxes on properties that is existing in naturally protected area. Since we cannot uh, dismantle all these houses, real estate properties owned by somebody, sold to somebody. So that's why Ulaanbaatar city is to take on that. The another uh, good income is for Ulaanbaatar city. Ulaanbaatar city is more than half of uh, Mongolia, Mongolian GDP. So another one is a land auction, which is not happening. If, if you're on the way to the airport, Yarma, new area, new construction districts, if those lands were called on auction, then it could have a, such an income that can be enough to make houses for low-income uh, families, uh, houses for rent, etc., we could do much better. So Ulaanbaatar city, instead of uh, gathering properly their real estates existing in Ulaanbaatar city um, proper way, now they are taking new step. They are raising, um, now they are issuing bond because the new law uh, from the beginning of this year uh, gives the right Ulamba to Ulaanbaatar city to issue bonds, which they are doing now, 500 billion MNT bond uh, permission requested now from Ulaanbaatar city to uh, financial Regu regulatory commission. Uh, but however, Ulaanbaatar city management and all citizens should know that bond is also a debt and we need to pay one day that bond. Uh, and, but 
whether they have a clear plan how to pay it or not. That's the issue that uh, FRC should consider these days after they submitting their request for bond issuing. So depending on uh, what is the way of payment, uh, payment that bond, bond money, uh, we should uh, w discuss the way how to uh, encourage people to buy the bonds. In normal circumstances in many countries, they, the municipalities, they call it mini bonds, when they issue bond from the proceeds or coupons, incomes from that bond, uh, from coupons, you know, people usually tax exempted by that uh, municipality. So Ulaanbaatar uh, also has, uh, must have that power to tax exempt for proceeds from the coupon of the bond. So that's uh, some new thing and uh, we should not be again in another uh, debt trap like a whole government uh, is doing now. So Ulaanbaatar uh, hopefully will raise with this money uh, may solve the issue of traffic jam, housing in particular. So in terms of housing, only way of uh, reconsidering new ways of housing Ulaanbaatar Lambata City is a uh, must because uh, one, one way, for example, those people who live in Gir area, they can get together, kind of creating cooperatives and then they make their, their own uh, new apartments, districts, and they also benefit from the sales of the remaining, they are, they are taking first their own apartments, the remaining uh, rest of the apartments to be sold and should be in their uh, favor or those uh, who had uh, now fence or get on land, they should receive uh, money from that uh, profit of the selling those houses. So I, I put this idea long, many years ago, let's replace our fences with housing. That's the motto we have been developing. So nevertheless, now we're again facing this traffic jam and hopefully based on what the mayor said, this year it will be less problematic than before. Okay, this is our second topic. Thank you very much for watching our program. We highlighted two things. One is about new education system. Second, about traffic challenge coming again to us. See you next week.